Okay, I uh, thought I'd make this uh, video of this uh, 1972 Yamaha R5, which has just short of 33,000 miles on it, to show what I'm doing here as far as uh, decarbonizing the uh, pistons on this thing, uh, which needs to be done pretty often. They say uh, reset the points at about every 4,000 miles and I'd say about every 8,000 you probably ought to take a look at these pistons. So I've done this many times over the 33,000 miles. Uh, here you can see a piston that I've decarboned and it's all set ready to put the cylinder back on. Uh, the other one as you can see is uh, it still needs to be worked on yet and I'll remove that piston uh, to remove them, I would advise you to get one of these pullers which helps extract the wrist pin uh, if you ever do this to your own bike. Uh, there's a lot of people that say decarbonize these things by oh, spraying some stuff in the carburetor and it'll clean the carbon out of the engine. Well, uh, getting the carbon off the top of the piston and the cylinder heads is not the important thing what you got to worry about. The decarbonizing has to do with the rings uh, these pistons have a Dykes ring on the top, kind of an L section ring. They most never stick or get stuck. Uh, they're usually most engines that have those are pretty good as far as ring sticking. The second ring is the one that'll get stuck. Uh, originally, this bike had uh, uh, sort of a, what they call a keystone set of rings on it, which had an angle on each piston ring. Uh, they got stuck very easily. So I think when it had about uh, oh, five or 6,000 miles on it, I changed those pistons uh, to these newer ones, which is probably what they use on an RD or something. I don't know, but it had, it had the Dykes rings. This top ring is a Dykes ring, and that's much better, and you don't have near the problem with sticking rings. If the rings get stuck, uh, then you'll get blow-by. The blow-by blows the oil film off the cylinder walls, and eventually you're going to have a seizure. A two-stroke engine, the rings have got to be free. And I take these rings off and I scrape the carbon out of the grooves just going around with a dental pick. I use uh, a little bit of decarbonizing stuff, uh, carburetor cleaner. Uh, if you got some that you can soak, some of them come in a gallon can with a soak basket and that works real well to soften the carbon. But you got to go around there with a scraper to get it off. Uh, some people recommend using a broken piston ring and you can make a pretty good scraper out of that but I use just a dental pick uh, like they use for cleaning your teeth at the dental office and that works pretty good particularly after you get the carbon softened up. As far as taking it off of here I usually use just put it in the sink with a little bit of water running on it and some wet or dry sandpaper maybe about 180 paper and rub it around in there and it'll it'll take this carbon off there real easy. That comes off easy. It's getting it out of the ring grooves. That's the thing that's important. The piston gets rid of its heat through the rings and if the rings are stuck the piston's going to overheat. You get blow by. I mean it's, it's just a condition that's going to snowball on you. So I'd say hmm, about every eight, ten thousand miles you better do it on one of these one of these two-stroke bikes. It's something that needs to be done. Some of the synthetic oils you might get a little bit more than that out of it. Some of those tend to carbon less but you're going to get carbon just from the gasoline so there's nothing that's going to keep it clean and nothing you spray in your uh, in your carburetor is going to take that carbon out of that engine. The rings always stick on the back side. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not this one here a ring stuck on the back side. Now I use something like this it's a knife for I think it's for opening oranges or something but I'll go around that ring because it's it's not stuck. The second ring isn't stuck. You can see it moving there. It's the other side. This side sticks and they'll start sticking right where the gap is and the gap's usually on the back side of the piston so you can't see anything from the exhaust port. So if you're looking in there trying to determine if your rings are stuck that's not going to help you. It's on the back side. That's where you got to look. And where the gap is, of course this one's just starting to stick here, but I'll go around it with this and pry that ring out always put the same ring on the same cylinder because they're worn together, they're matched together. These are the original uh, uh, rings on these pistons which has been in there since probably about six or seven thousand miles is when I changed them. 
and went to this new stock. I changed them not because there was anything wrong with the old ones, but I knew these Dykes rings like this are much less apt to uh, get stuck. And I wanted those particular kind of rings. And I bought those from the Yamaha dealer. So, anyways, uh, it's real important to uh, to keep those rings so that they're free. And if they're stuck, use something like you can use a six-inch scale, or I'm using, like I say, it's an orange opening knife. It's soft steel. It's not heat treated or anything like that. Just a cheap little thin knife. But you can go around the inside, and I'll probably be able to work that loose. If I can't, if you can't get the ring out of the groove, sometimes it pays to to heat it up and heat the piston a little bit uh, after soaking it in carburetor cleaner and everything else if it still won't come clean why well, try heating the piston a little alright here we'll see me trying to get that stuck ring out of there, there we go always want to keep the ring the uh, same side up and keep the same ring in the same cylinder. You think, well, they're the same size. Well, they were when they were new, but after the engine's run and it's been broken in, as they say, those parts are matched. The pistons match to the cylinder, the rings match to that cylinder, and you want to keep the same ring in the same cylinder. And these have been in there for 33,000 miles. And, uh, now it's just a matter of using my dental pick to go around and clean that carbon out of there, but I'll soften it first by putting it into some... Uh, carburetor cleaner dip uh, and the other thing you want to I want to point out is you get a lot of carbon on the back side of the piston these hunks of carbon if it comes off of here can get down in the crankshaft that's not good for your bearings you got enough stuff trying to fly around in that engine without worrying about pieces of carbon going into the crankshaft so uh, this will get soft and I'll be able to scrape that off and I use a dental pick and uh, maybe a screwdriver or something to scrape it in there and get that carbon out of the back. The oil flings off the flywheels, hits the hot piston, that's what's forming the carbon on the bottom. But a lot of people don't realize, hey, I gotta get that carbon out from underneath that piston. And you don't want hunks of it going into your crankshaft. That's not good. But then see if you can get it loose. But uh, but that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.